tracks, tracking in complex sensor systems. The topic of this presentation is Gaussian process for propagation modeling and proximity-based indoor positioning. Hello, my name is Yixin Zhao. I'm an early-stage researcher working on the TREX project at Ericsson in Lichoping, Sweden. I will give a brief introduction about the background and our motivations behind this work. Then, the concept of proximity and the problem to be solved in this work will be provided. After that, Detailed propagation modeling and positioning algorithms will be elaborated with some experimental results using measured data in a real office environment. As all can notice, over the past few years, indoor positioning using wireless sensor networks has received considerable attention due to the ever-increasing demand on location-based services that are widely used in a variety of applications. Such various infrastructures and techniques may include but not limited to small cells, Wi-Fi access points, and Bluetooth low energy beacons. For instance, there have been growing interest in the indoor proximity services, which is a kind of similar to the outdoor cell identification as shown at the bottom of this slide. To be more precise, the event-triggered proximity report is obtained by comparing the measured received signal strength value with a pre-selected threshold. The proximity report obtained in this way indicates the coverage area of a certain reference network node. Then a proximity vector which contains proximity information of several reference network nodes gives the approximate area of the target device. As compared to the conventional receive signal strength measurements, proximity is beneficial in various aspects, unlike the periodic RSS reports where a mobile device sends the measured RSS values to the network regularly. A proximity report will be triggered only when the proximity status changes. For example, the mobile device crosses the border when the RSS passes the threshold, as shown by the cross marker in the figure on this slide. Harness of proximity reports may result in new fashioned positioning system with lower communication bandwidth, less signaling overhead, smaller database as well as cheaper deployment and the maintenance cost. So in order to get the position of a, mov mov uh, of a moving device, we assume that uh, there's a, there are three components in the network. For instance, we assume there is a competition entity, which um, is equipped with some storage and some competition ability. And also we assume that there is one mobile device, which will be used to collect the measurements. And also, there, is a reference, there are several reference network nodes which, from which the mobile device can measure the reference distance. <coughs> so after we have obtained the, the optimal threshold, the computation entity will configure the mobile device with this threshold. And the mobile device will measure the reference signal from the network node. And then it will compare the received signal strength with the threshold and uh, convert it into proximity reports. And further, the mobile device will send the proximity reports for, to the competition entity for uh, part for filtering to get the position estimation. And the algorithm can be sub, uh, summarized in three steps. In the first step, we need to know the deployment information of the building. For instance, we, have, we need to have the map of the office. We need to know the position of all the reference network nodes. And the second step, we need to assume some dynamic motion model, and also we, um, we need to uh, calibrate some measurement model for this receive signal uh, strength and also the proximity measurements. In the third step, with all this information we have, we will apply the particle filter algorithm to get the position estimation. The 
complete state space model consists of a dynamic motion model and a measurement model. The dynamic model relates the current state with the previous state, and the measurement model gives the relationship between current state and the current measured ISS or proximity value. It is noted that each measurement vector contains measurements from each of the reference network nodes. Traditionally, the linear log distance model is used to relate the distance to the network node to the measured ISS value. However, in the Gaussian process regression model, the measured clean value is approximate by a Gaussian process, which is fully determined by its mean and covariance functions as given on this slide. So, unlike the conventional ISS model, the Gaussian process regression model introduces correlation between two positions. From the covariance function, we can see that for positions that are close by, it is likely that the RSS values at those positions are closely correlated and vice versa. In order to train a Gaussian process regression model, we need to collect a set of RSS measurements together with their positions. The actual observed ISS value can be seen as a cleaned value plus some additive noise. Then the likelihood function is formed to determine the parameters theta from the training data set. Once we obtain the parameters for this Gaussian process regression model, we can estimate the mean and the variance of the RSS value at a newly given position P star using the posterior distribution. So next, we will show some examples of Gaussian process regression models. On the left side of this slide, we have the traditional log distance linear model for Bacon number 4. On the right side, we plotted the posterior mean and the variance for the Gaussian process regression model, where the yellow color indicating higher ISS values and the blue color indicating lower ISS values. Now we have obtained all the prerequisites to perform particle filtering. Then the algorithm to estimate position given a vector of ISS or proximity measurements can be summarized as follows. First, initialize particle samples randomly from some prior distribution and give each particle equal weight. Then, propagate the particle samples using the dynamic motion model. Then, calculate the weight of each particle sample according to the probability of the measurement, given a certain position. After we obtain the weight of each particle, the position estimation is a weighted sum of all the particle samples. At the end of each iteration, we need to check if the resampling is needed to prevent high concentration of probability mass at a few particles. The new particles will be generated from a Gaussian distribution based on previous particle samples, and the weight update for proximity measurement can be easily derived as shown on this slide. The results of the proposed algorithm will be shown on the next few slides. The first result we show is under the assumption that the optimal threshold is the same among all reference network nodes. And here we have compared the linear log distance model and the Gaussian process regression model with measurements of different periodicity and occasions. Gaussian process regression based proximity positioning can achieve an accuracy of 3.5 meters for 50% of the positions. Moreover, Gaussian process regression model helps to improve the positioning performance for all the cases. On this slide, we show results under the assumption that the reference network nodes will have different threshold. As compared to the previous case, the positioning accuracy is further improved by around 1.8 meters for 50% of the positions. In order to have a more intuitive view, 
there will be a video showing the position results using Gaussian process regression model for both RSS and proximity moments. Here in this video, the cloud will denote the particles generated at each time instance. The black cloud is for RSS and the blue cloud is for proximity. Then at the center of each cloud, the green and the red circle will illustrate the final position estimate for RSS and proximity measurement, respectively. From all these results, we can conclude that the Gaussian process regression model is beneficial in improving the positioning accuracy. Proximity-based positioning can also provide us with promising accuracy, while at the same time saving signaling overhead as well as communication bandwidth, which is more compatible with the location-based applications in nowadays. Although promising positioning results have been obtained, there is still much to do to further enhance our work. For instance, some theoretical lower bounds for Gaussian process-based positioning could be derived. Different dynamic motion models may be used to feed different motion patterns. Also, a standard Gaussian process has high computation complexity. We need to consider some more efficient algorithms for Gaussian process such as online Gaussian process, sparse or distributed Gaussian process. That's the end of the presentation. Thank you for your listening. For more information about Trax, please visit our site at trax.u20.nl.